My name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look at a few different shelter setups using a 3x3 metre tarp. The tarp, hammock and bug net I'm going to be using today are supplied by Alton Goods. Sam Schumann is a friend of mine and he's actually done a number of our courses at Bushcraft Survival Australia and I've been using his equipment for quite a number of years.
So this is our typical A-frame shelter. We have our ridge line across the top which is running through the loops on the centre line of a tarp. Our first knot or hitch is our Siberian hitch, that's always the first one. Our second one is our tarp taut hitch and that gives us our tensioning, that's our second knot. Then we've, we have our two prussics which is holding the tension so that this doesn't slide on our notes, our, pr our prussic knot is connecting our tarp, um, stopping it sliding in at each end with our toggles. And our guy lines are attached to our stakes on either end. Yes, if a tree is in the right place, you can use a tree, but, the, um, but just to show you, it's all about getting that correct angle. Where the tarp points is where our stake needs to go. And what we used here was our adjustable knot, which is essentially our sliding prussic. And I've done that on all four corners. I always be careful that I do one side, then the other side, then I do the end. That just keeps the tension even to keep that angularity. And I've got quite a lot of room. Now I can also set this up closer to, to, to the ground. If it was really, really wet weather, I would simply lower that and I can take this right down to the ground and stake it into the ground that way. It's whatever height you like is, is how you can work that. But um, another option here is that you can raise one of the ends here, say if you had a tree, so we have a higher side and a down side, so it's asymmetrical, then the opposite on the other side to help with runoff. So you, there's many, many different ver um, variations of setting this up. But very versatile shelter, probably the one that I use most commonly, works well with a hammock um, and you've got so much versatility with it and once you're inside whatever sleeping method you are, you usually sleep on a short base um, three-quarter sleeping mat under a sleeping bag and a ground sheet and I'm good to go it's that simple that's what I use in the military as well with our hoochies really simple piece of kit and very fast to erect and to pull down as well and it's it's my favorite um, and most used shelter configuration so that's the uh, a-frame shelter. Okay, one of the hammocks I love to use regularly is the Alton Goods hammocks and, um, and bug net. He's got a new bug net and it's, it's, they're really ultra lightweight. I've used them everywhere. They're absolutely terrific. Keep the mozzies out and they're all in a nice natural olive green as well. So I'm going to show you how I set those up using the strap system that, that uh, Sam uses for these hammocks.
Okay, so what we have here is our diamond configuration used generally in conjunction with a hammock. And what the diamond configuration gives you is it gives you um, greater protection um, from the elements. It gives you about a one to two um, foot footprint larger than what you get with the standard A-frame shelter. And exactly the same knots used, Siberian hitch, our tarp taut hitch, and our two adjustable knots on the corners. The only thing that's changed is it's just the configuration now is set in a diamond configuration. Now, used with a hammock and bug net in this case, it absolutely works um, beautifully. Now, where this is the um, out and goods hammock and, and mozzie net and bug net, and it's a, it's a brilliant bug net. This, um, it's actually the only bug net I know that's actually olive green, so out in the bush it actually works beautifully, in the, and I've used this in the military as well, so um, it ticks all those boxes. And uh, the hammock is a ultra lightweight hammock, very, very strong, and I use this all the time up in Darwin. I've used it um, many, many times, and the, and the mozzies in Darwin are big enough to carry you away. And so this is actually, it's a very, very fine mesh, and it's, it stops them getting in as well. It's great for sand flies as well. Um, very, um, very, very lightweight. This has a ridge line across, once again, tied with the same knots, exactly the same knots, and it's all clipped up to that. Now, you have to make sure that it's not sagging too much. You've only got a small area to play with here, so you, there's a bit of a test and, test and adjusting that needs to happen when you're setting up a mos um, mosquito net and a hammock. You have to get in, you have to trial, um, trial things because every two um, sets of trees you choose, you need to make sure basically it's, it's going to hang differently depending on the length of the straps. Now in the diamond configuration, the distance between the trees needs to be further, unlike the A-frame. And that poses a problem in the sense that it creates your, your straps that we put up to be longer. So therefore you've got to, um, you're going to have more sag in your hammock. So you need to test and adjust that. That's probably the drawback of using the, um, the diamond as opposed to the A-frame. But then you don't get the water coverage that you get with the diamond with the A-frame. So there's horses for courses. But it's, a, it's an extremely good hammock. You've got a zipper on the side and it's, it's, it's fantastic. So um, I really um, enjoy using this in the hot climates. In a colder climate, I'm more of a hot weather person. It, when it gets a bit cool, and even in summer, don't forget you need to put some form of insulation underneath you. I generally use a three-quarter um, blow-up snug pack mattress um, or just the, the um, a closed cell three-quarter mattress. Remember, you only need to protect from here to your shoulders. You do not need a full-length um, sleeping mat, particularly in Australia. That's, that is only serves the purpose of below minus 10.
so this is our Adiandac shelter configuration. Now the term Adiandac, Adiandac is a mountain range in northeast in um, New York um, state in the United States and Adiandac literally means bark eaters and it was a derogatory term that the Mo Mohawk tribe um, used to describe the Algonquin. And it's an interesting configuration. Essentially, it's our same ridge line, same knots, Siberian hitch, um, taut tarp hitch, two prussics. Note the where the two prussics occur. So to give you a better look so you can see what's happening, you can pull this down the front, but I'm just going to throw that over the top so you can actually look in. And that's all it is. And then each of the tie-off tie -off points are going round. And what this gives us is the same as a lean-to, except we've now got some sides in here. So now we've got protection against the elements. With the fire in front, this works really well and the heat bounces all around. And it is um, very, very well protected against the rain. We can just pop the flap over the top for extra protection. It's a very, very simple shelter. Now, these stakes come with the out and goods um, tarp. They're ultra light, they're really, really good. I'm actually a fan of using natural stakes out in the bush, so you don't have the whole point of bushcraft is to only take into the bush what you need, and I like to create everything else. But when it comes up to setting tarp figure configurations, um, they're really good. They actually weigh nothing. You wouldn't even know you had them, but very, um, like anything, the more you take, the easier it is to lose. But they come with it. They still are very, very the lightest um, tent pegs that I've seen. So I've used those to stake this out. Great shelter, very simple shelter. This is the Adyan deck.
yet another configuration. This is aptly named the tarp tent. And taking the, uh, the tarp, I started off with what I did. I set it out squarely to start with and then missing I took this one out just got the bottom two keeping those two taut I put those two together then the back so I did exactly the same on the other side simple as that keep it nice and taut as you go then at the front with our square I just took our outside loop and moved it here moved it in a little bit just inside where the second loop would have would have been and once again keeping it nice and taut there's our outside loop there and all I've done is instead of just that flapping about I've just tied it back to another stake and I've done exactly the same on this side which left the very front to be pulled back here and that's our shelter inside I have a stick now I've only put the stick under the front section and I put the um, tent peg bag over the top of that and that's just to stop now that the tent the, the actual stick in there is right on that reinforced bit you don't want it to be on this because it's going to cut through it so make sure you round the corners of the stick um, some people use those hiking poles um, I don't even see how they work to me just grab a stick from the bush they're everywhere and cut it to the length you need then you don't have to take yet another gadget that you don't really need so these are everywhere um, just grab yourself a straight stick and do that just making sure it's nice and smooth and now we've got a, a really easy um, a nice easily made tent that we can spend the night in this sheds water really really well so let's come in and have a look Lots and lots of room. You can lie diagonally across. Of course I'm going to have my sleeping mat down. Not something to use in the summer, but definitely in wet weather you can set this up quite quickly. Um, I usually have this facing away from the wind, so I'd have the, the open side facing away from the wind and any rain that's coming in so it's not going to come straight through there but I'd have my sleeping mat down so very if another once again there's many many uses of this shelter and nice and taut works really well I can get a line and peg the back up with um, if I like or get another stick configured slightly differently I can um, also set that up but I generally don't need do that this works fine it's plenty of room in here for me and all my gear really um, very very simple um, uh, configuration to erect and that's the tarp tent.
hope you've enjoyed this episode on the different shelter setups using a 3 by 3 metre tarp. If you enjoy these episodes, please hit the subscribe button and tell others about it. That way we can help continue to promote bushcraft in Australia. If you'd like to do one of our Bushcraft Survival Australia courses, check, it out, check out our website at www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au. My name's Gordon Dedman. Thanks a lot for watching.